Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video episode on Forgotten Weapons. I'm Ian, I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction House taking a look at some of their guns in the regional 2015 auction, June 2015 auction. One of the ones I wanted to take a look at here was a Kuiper Pass copy of a Colt pistol. I've been looking at a lot of Chinese handmade pistols and I thought we'd break it up a little bit and have a, a Kyber Pass Pakistani one as well. So the Kyber Pass is an area of Pakistan, very near Afghanistan, that has this tradition of, um, cultural tra tradition really, of gun manufacturing. They've been doing it for well over a hundred years. Um, and while some of the guns they produce are quite good, some of them are also quite abomin abominably bad. This one's pretty far down the ladder towards bad, uh, but frankly that's kind of what makes it interesting. Uh, the, the little details that we'll be able to take a look at that really indicate that it's a handmade gun. The other thing that makes this particular one interesting is the fact that it is very clearly styled to look like a Colt 1911, albeit a small one. Um, one of the, a 32 or a 380 caliber Colt, actually. Uh, something like Llama, frankly, would have been making a while back. Uh, however, despite looking like a Colt, it doesn't actually function like a Colt. It is a straight blowback pistol. And mechanically, it's much similar, much more similar to like the Spanish A-bar Ruby pistols. So why don't I bring the camera back here and let's take a closer look at some of the features and get an idea for what a handmade Pakistani Kyber Pass pistol looks like on the inside. So let's take a look at what some of the more interesting features are once we uh, disassemble this a bit and get a closer look at it. First off, let's see. First off, let's take a look at the frame. So the trigger mechanism isn't quite the same as the 1911, obviously, here. What we have is our trigger is connected to this bar, which pushes on that sear. So when I push that back, when it clicks back, the hammer releases. So if the hammer's not cocked, the trigger does nothing. And interestingly, there is actually a disconnector so if I hold the trigger down, it does actually reset. So this, is, this will not fire full auto. It will occasionally malfunction when the grip's not on it, but not actually a machine gun. Uh, and it's funny to note that there's this extra cut up here in the frame that serves no point and was frankly almost certainly a goof on the part of the machinist miscalculating how deep he needed to cut somewhere. Uh, we do have some markings on the bottom of the frame for what those are worth, kind of interesting. And then this is interesting. This is the retaining spring for the safety, which is also the barrel pin. And what I find interesting is that this piece is pinned in place. It doesn't pivot up and down. When this moves, when you put the safety on and off, it's just flexing this piece of metal. So if I try and pull it down, it's got, it, it doesn't actually pivot. That's interesting. Our magazine catch is down here, has a little spring inside a back plate. Uh, the pin holding this back strap on can move. I'm not taking it out. I don't want to mess with that, but that's in there. Got our ejector right here. That's pretty much it for the frame itself. Clearly handmade. Now the slide Let's see. It looks like the front bushing is a separate piece. Um, it doesn't really want to come off very well. I suspect if you mess with it enough, you can get the spring out and then you can get the barrel out. But I don't want to disassemble this to the point that I can't get it back together here. One interesting element is that we've got these two spring-loaded plungers on the back of the slide. And this bottom one's the firing pin. That's, we can see that when the pistol's together. The top one, I don't know what it is. Um, it's not a safety. I have no idea what that thing does. Maybe it's just there to look interesting. Then, if I can get a good view of it in the camera, I do want to show you what the rifling looks like in this because it's kind of horrific. Let me get a bore light. All right, so a question that regularly comes up with some of these homemade type guns is, well, how do they manage to rifle it? That takes some kind of specialized machinery. The answer is, well, I can't tell you exactly what process they use. I can tell you the rifling in these guns is often not very pretty. Uh, kind of like this one, in fact. 
I would rate this as about average for what you find in rifling for uh, especially Chinese guns, but also Kyber Pass guns. With the gun reassembled here, we can look at some basic function. Uh, this works just like any other straight blowback. I have the safety on. That is off. That's straight off of a ruby. Slide racks. Pull the trigger. Hammer drops. That is it. It has a heel release, again like a ruby. Uh, the magazine on this one is missing. I suspect this is 32 ACP. That's really the caliber that would make most sense. Uh, it is not actually marked with a caliber, not surprisingly. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you uh, just can't live without having something like this in your own collection, well, you should check the text link in the description below. That'll take you to Rock Island's catalog page, because this is coming up for sale at the end of June 2015. And if you'd like it, you can bid on it. Uh, it is part of a lot. It comes with two other pistols as well. So if you go to that link, you can check out the pictures of this and the other two guns, see what you think, and uh, create an account and place a bid online. Thanks for watching.